What is up, Cowboys Nation? Your boy Mike Tag here, and just another wild day in Cowboys Nation. I mean, if it wasn't enough what happened on Sunday, you know, then you got to get all the stuff laying low on Monday. And now Tuesday, we all ant anticipated Jerry Jones doing his regular spot on um, 105.3 with, with Sean and RJ. And, um, you know, things went a little wild, to say the least. And Jerry Jones, you could see the heat is getting to him. You can see the pressure is mounting, some of the decisions he's making. And 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 I'm going to play a clip. I'm going to play a clip of, of the interview, and then we're going to get into it. But, you know, it's... It's not a good look for Jerry. Um, you're the owner, but you also want to be the GM. You say the buck stops with you. That means you're going to have to answer some tough questions. And I give it to Sean and, and, and RJ. You know, they went ahead and, and they asked the questions that we wanted to ask regarding the lack of free agency movement, the lack of addressing positions of need in the draft or in free agency. And you can see he was uh, – he wasn't getting real. He wasn't real happy about it. He wasn't real happy about it. So let's play the clip and let's get Jerry on the phone. And then I definitely, I'd love to get your guys' comments uh, below. And, and we're going to talk about it more on Monday with our live show with Kelly K9. And make sure if you guys are checking us out, hit that subscribe, hit that like button, and definitely leave a comment. But you know, like I said, it, it, it's starting to mount. You, you saw what what our, what our guy Steph did with the you know fire the GM movement. And getting a lot of traction, getting on TV, getting a lot of run, getting a lot of stuff in the media. Our man Kelly K9 in his own way, his own way that only he can do it. Uh, he had his post game speech that, you know, that little video we did went went viral. I think last I checked, it was over a quarter of a million views. So people are getting attention, and it, the Dallas Cowboys, they drive negativity, drives everything up. I see it with our own show. It's like. That when the negativity comes, here comes the you know the, all the views, all the eyeballs, everything on it. Want to hear what everyone has to say? But I, but I'll say this: it's tough for a Cowboys fan, and you know I'm I'm one of those longtime Cowboy fans, like a lot in Cowboys Nation, and I've kind of gotten numb to Jerry. I've always said you got to win in spite of Jerry. Yeah, everyone loves him at the owner as an owner for what he does to the team and the prominence and all the great stuff that happens. But as a GM. A little left to be desired. I mean, he's they've done some good things, but like he said, they've done some bad things, and you'd like to have some of those back. But, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with admitting, hey, maybe we underestimated this, or hey, maybe we overestimated what we had. And there's nothing wrong with reflection. You've got an opportunity with, with the trade deadline to address this kind of stuff. So you could do it, but ego... Uh, afraid to admit that maybe you made a mistake. You know, you can see it. I'm going to play this clip. It's about two minutes. I'll kind of chat uh, in, in certain spots. But, it, you know, it got heated, and we'll get into it. But check check this out. Let's see what we got. Let's let's get over here and make sure I got it right. It's like point. My point. Let, let me tell you what I'll do. Let me tell you what I'll do about it. Uh, I will uh, let us sit down and look at the decisions we've made over the last several years. Okay. I'll look at it. Now, if you think I'm interested on a, on a damn phone call with you over a radio and sitting here and throwing all the good out with the dishwater, you have got to be smoking something over there this morning. <laughs> I'm not. And I really don't, and I don't even want our listeners to listen to me, uh, to talk about this is not your job. Your job isn't to let me go over all the reasons that I did something, and I'm sorry that I did it. That's not your job. What is their job? Well, my it's, job is to so ask get why. A job, or I'll get another. I'll get somebody else to ask these questions, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, we're just we're we're we're, we're trying to figure out why no, the team no, is. I'm not. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. You're not going to figure out it's uh, what the team is doing right or wrong. If you are. Uh, or any five or ten like you, you need to come to this meeting I'm going to today. There are 32 teams here. You're geniuses. <laughs> Jerry, okay. y'all really think you're going to sit here with a microphone and tell me uh, uh, all of the things that uh, I've done wrong and without going over the rights? Well, now, listen, we both know we're talking to a lot of great fans and a lot of great listeners, and I am very sorry 
for what happened out there Sunday. I'm sick about what happened Sunday. Now, I'm not talking to these yahoos on the end of this phone. I'm talking to you, the fans that are listening this morning. And we can spend a lot of time going over zigging and zagging. One of the stupidest things I've ever done that anybody has ever analyzed is by the Cowboys. How many times does he have to remind us of that? idiot that did that. So idiot things can turn into good decisions. Okay? Smart things can turn into bad decisions. The facts are that when you make one, you don't really know whether it's going to be good or not at the time. So let's let's just uh, go ahead. I'm trying to answer your questions, man. You want some you want some conversation this morning? You're getting it. <laughs> Jerry Jones here. And you you could yeah, I mean you could sense the you know he he his fuse was short. I thought it was way out of line to sit there and threaten people with their job. I mean that you want to talk about ego bully whatever you want to whatever phrase you want to do it. The you know they have a job to do. They're a radio show. They're the home of the Cowboys. They've got a lot of Cowboy fans listening. They got a lot of Cowboy fans upset. If you listen to the show, all the phone calls, everything went through. Um, they all want answers. And you're the GM for take your owner's hat off. We don't care that you bought the team and the risk you took. I, I, I you know, I don't know. I don't know if it was a risk back then. I mean, the NFL was on the verge, so I don't know if it was a big risk back back then. I mean, the Cowboys were still. Uh, considered America's team. Yeah, they were having some rough years, but, you know, it, it, I, I mean, he's been saying that line for a lot of years, and it's just getting kind of tired with that one. So move on from that line, but to threaten people with their jobs. You're the GM. Your job is to answer these questions, or don't go on the show. We don't need to hear you then. We don't need to hear you after the game. If you're going to sit there and you want a microphone in front of your face, you better be ready to answer the questions that people ask, hard or easy. Ain't going to just sit here and lob softball questions at you and just make this a kumbaya. This team has been underachieving over the last several years, making the playoffs and not achieving their goals, not advancing. That starts at the top, and you are at the top. You put yourself, obviously, at the the top as an owner, but the next step down is the GM. So you just need to, you know, not get so butthurt and answer the questions. And there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, you know, we like our running backs, but we haven't been running the ball well. And, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. but we're going to figure this thing out, whatever, however you want to put it. And it's not throwing your other players under the bus, saying that you made a bad decision. I mean, Derrick Henry is one of the top running backs in the NFL, one of the top all- all-time running backs still in his prime. So everyone in their brother knew, my wife knew, that we couldn't run the ball and we couldn't stop to run going into the offseason. You let Pollard go, so you really didn't have much running back. You have Rico, who I like Rico. Maybe he needs to get more opportunity, whatever it is. But he's been on a team like four or five years now. It's not like we got this young rookie and he came in. They could have had a backup. You've got Dalvin Cook. Everyone knew Zeke's role was going to be short yardage and goal line. So his play is going to be situational. There may be games where he doesn't get in at all. There may be some games where they're going to use him as the hammer. I mean, that's what they've decided to do, but that's his role. So I'm not – I love Zeke. I have no issues with Zeke. The thing is – and I don't have an issue with Rico, but I'm saying this team is on, was on the cusp, still could be on the cusp, but two areas of concern were running the football and stopping the run. And, you know, everything starts with running the football. A lot of people say, hey, we need to get another receiver. We need, In my opinion, we don't need another receiver. We need a running back. Maybe we need another offensive lineman. We knew the offensive line was going to be a work in progress starting two rookies. So I don't even hate the offensive line, and I understand what's going to happen. But the way things that we can help is being able to run the football effectively and being able to run it efficiently. I just don't know if we have those running backs here. You've got a third-string quarterback that you gave up a fourth-round draft pick that you're paying a lot of money for, and you could have been having it. You could have used a run. You could use some money for a running back. You could have signed CD earlier, which you're going to sign him for anyway. And you had money to get other players. I mean, I think that's a fair question. I think that's a fair question to ask a GM. What was your thought process? Why did you make the decisions that you made? You let a lot of guys go, which I don't think anyone complains about. But you you got to replace them. 
And the choice they made was to replace him with draft picks. Who they're hey, there's some good draft picks in there. I love our linebackers. I, I, I like our cornerback. You know, I think I love our two offensive linemen. I don't. I have no issues with that. But we didn't address the two major needs in the draft: defensive tackle and running back. So then you say, well, let's address them in free agency. Well, they didn't, and they could have. And then I think if they did and they weren't successful, the fan base would be like, well, you know what? They put it out there. They tried. They attempted. We heard the all-in, and they did it. You know, being all-in isn't re-signing Dak Prescott and C.D. Lamb. Those should have been givens. You know, all-in was, hey, we're close. We've got a couple missing pieces. Let's add those pieces. That's all-in. We got our guys. We got the core. But let's add a piece here. Let's add a piece there. Let's really go all in and make this thing happen. And you didn't. You didn't do it. And you got to answer the questions when the team is unsuccessful. So way out of line, in my opinion, Jerry Jones. Way out of line. He's getting all the heat he deserves. And will it make a difference? Probably not. I've always said, and people say, Mike, you know, you support the team and you don't go to these games. You got to understand, man. I've been a fan my whole life. I love the Dallas Cowboys. I love the Dallas Cowboys. I don't love Jerry Jones. You know, I don't love the players. I love the team. And they've done a lot for me in my life. Um, I am kind of in my, and I've given that story. There's just that path, a winding road, and, and all the weird things that kind of happened in my life. The Cowboys were a center part of that to get me to where I was. Forget the podcast, the hype video. That's all fun for me. That's that's a that's a hobby that I, I, I love hanging out with Cowboys Nation. I made some great friends. That's what I, you know, that's what I love when I go to the games. You know, I always said the game's secondary, but I love the the aura of the Dallas Cowboys and what it means to me as a kid. It's it's recapturing, you could say as you get older, your remembrance of your youth and this and that. And it's the one Sunday I don't have to deal with politics. I don't have to he deal with all the crap going on in the world for three, four hours. I sit and watch football and I enjoy it and I cheer and I get pissed off and da da da. But, you know, when it's over, I'm not like that uh, Raven fan going to go out and fight people for no reason. Thank God they caught his ass and, and he's going to serve the time in jail. It, it is what it is, win or lose. They Hopefully they win because I don't like to see them losing for God's sakes. And that's that's what it means to me. Um, Am I going to less games this year? Yeah, because there's money. I have a budget, and there's money in there, and I'm not going to overextend my budget to go to games if I'm not feeling good about this, this team. I'll just watch it from home, just like you guys do. But I'm going to go. I've got two more games up on my list, three more games on my list to go, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to have a damn good time, and the Cowboys better win if I'm going to go. I don't want to see them lose. Piss me off. But – um I love, you know, so so that's what it is. So, you know, I I get the frustration with Jerry. Absolutely. He's getting all the heat he wants. He's getting everything he deserves. And I would love to hear your comments on it. I, I mean, are you boycotting? Are you done? Are you this? Because the funny thing is, is like the negative fans that I get, and they're saying, I told you I did this. And that. you got to comment the most. So you probably watch him more than I do, you know? And, and you know, so I, so, yeah, I just don't know. I want to focus on where does the team go from here? How can we get this team back? They have the talent. They're going to get some injured guys back. I mean, can they save the season? They're one game out of first place. I mean, it, they are. I mean, as crazy as it is. I mean, they're one game out. They've got, they've got a tough stretch ahead. Is there any chance for him to salvage it, or is this kind of, hey, we're all, we're going down with the ship. It's going to be like the Titanic. I'm playing the violin, and I bet hopefully there's a lifeboat right before it sinks that I can jump on. But I'm in too deep with the Cowboys, man. There's no turning back. Now, my son, you know, he is too, but I feel for him. I feel for those guys uh, and fans that are 25, that are 30 and under, that didn't get the opportunities to see the Cowboys achieve the Super Bowls, because that's always going to be the knock. Oh, it's been 30 years. It's all that. I mean, some teams never. There's a ton of teams that never. But the standard of the Cowboys isn't, and that's what Jerry needs to understand. It's not patting yourself on the back for winning 12 games. It's not patting your back on the back on, on the back for having the, the best stadium in the NFL. It's not patting yourself on the back for having the great events outside 
you know, AT&T, you got the Tyson fight coming in. You, you know, you've had the Super Bowl. Now you got the Formula One going around in Arlington and bringing all that together. You pat yourself on the back with, with championships. And that's the standard that the fans have. And that's why you've got such a passionate fan base. They are due and deserving of Super Bowls. And what has happened has been unacceptable. And you need to hear it. You need to own it. And ultimately, you're the GM. You need to fix it. However way that is, if it's a coaching decision, if it's other players, if it's a trade, you see the Amari Cooper. And I didn't think we need a receiver, so I have zero issues we didn't go get Cooper. I got zero issues we didn't go get, you know, Devontae Adams, the money that he was going to be. But I sure the hell would get pretty excited if we got a running back. I sure the hell would get pretty excited if we got a defensive tackle or two. I was sure the hell would get excited if we got maybe a, another offensive lineman just for, hey, just saying, hey, guys, we got in a case of emergency break glass. We got this offensive lineman. We're going to add more depth. Just in case our young guys have got, you know, struggling, we got a backup plan. We're not going to go in, you know, with that, with nothing else, because we understand these young guys, it's going to be a process. And you see them getting better every week. I said there was going to be ups and downs. And unfortunately, I didn't predict the downs to be the beating that they got on Sunday. And the, the crazy thing is, as I was talking to my son tonight, I mean, the Bills got destroyed. I mean, the, the Ravens got destroyed. Teams get beat badly. Good teams get beat badly. But with the Cowboys, it's always going to be looked at. It's always going to be another level. But the Cowboys are getting beat badly every time they lose this year. If they don't win, they're getting destroyed. That's a trend that's not good, especially when it's at home. That is that is that is a recipe for what Jerry's seeing, and he's going to feel the fire. He needs to continue to feel the fire, and I'm just proud of all the Cowboys Nation that has been vocal, that has been letting me because he is hearing it. I mean, you if you look, you listen to that clip I played, and you go back and listen to that whole you know the radio show on 105.3 that with with his interview, you can hear it in his voice. He's going to be on there next week apologizing to those guys because that was uncalled for unacceptable and that was pretty low class um that's that's old school owner bullying and hey you don't do it my way you don't do what i like i'll just get rid of you and i don't like that that's that that's not the way that you're a businessman that's not the way you run business and you're running a business right and that would jerry I, you always say that as a business you're running a business you don't treat people that way that was unacceptable. I'd love to get your comments. Love to get your thoughts. Make sure you hit that subscribe, like, share. Just wanted to drop this quick video. Uh, join us tomorrow night, Wednesday, or yeah, Wednesday night. If you're catching this the next day, it's going to be Wednesday night. Kelly K9 and I, we haven't talked. Kelly and I haven't talked since the game. Uh, Eugene Lockhart's probably going to be calling in because we haven't, we, I haven't talked to him. The, you know, it's going to be some fireworks. I have a feeling on Wednesday and Kelly and I agree on a lot. We might disagree on a few other things, but the thing is we're going to work this thing out and see what happens. Uh, we're six games in, not looking good, but it's a long season ahead and I'm not giving up on them yet, but hopefully Jerry's hearing this, hearing the cries of Cowboys nation and try and do something, but I have a feeling he's not. So I appreciate it. I'll see you guys tomorrow night, Wednesday night. Thanks again for all the support. Make sure you hit that subscribe, like, and share it with Cowboys Nation. Love you guys. Appreciate it. Take care. Give me somebody that's hungry. Give me somebody that's hungry. I need somebody.